willfully, and there's nobody in the church that's willing to correct it. Nobody. The pastor won't correct you because he's afraid you'll quit giving your tithe. Well, frankly, you know what? <laughs> I'm counting the tithes you paid in this ministry, so I, I it don't no matter. <laughs> it's not, it's a not, you, you have to understand something. The tithe is not for the church. The tithe is for you. It's for your family's benefit. It's a multiple, God multiplies what you give him. The first, I, I, I got to say this. The first thing about the tithe says this to God. It says, God, I trust you. If you're not tithing to God, you're telling God, well, I don't trust you in this area. I believe you for a healing. I trust you for a healing. I trust you for salvation, but I don't trust you in the area of my finance. If you give it to the pastor, you're giving to the wrong person. Give to God. Amen. The, the, the church is being destroyed. It's being, it's being, it's being, the enemy is wreaking havoc in the house because we are sinning willfully. 1 Corinthians 6 says this, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor infeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye were washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. We, all of these things that I just named are happening in the church today. Adultera, from the Greek word, it means, it's, it's, it's the Greek word for adultera is moikos. Moikos, an adulterer, is one who faithless towards God. He's ungodly, effeminate. I can see I gotta break this down because we, we, we just read over it and never look at the, defi the defined meaning of these words. Effeminate. The Greek word for effeminate is melikos. Alright, and it means of a boy kept for homosexual relations with a man, or a male who submits his body to an unnatural lewdness i.e. a male prostitute. Uh, he said abusers would not receive the kingdom of God. Abusers, from the Greek word asynchronites, means it's a sodomite, one who lies with a male as a with female sodomite, or homosexual. We have to understand that this is Hebrews 10, 26. He said, for if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for the sins. We have got men in church that they know they fit this description. And we're just allowing them to continue to function like they will be all right when they leave this place. Well, I'm going to tell you, I love you enough to tell you the truth. And that is, according to this word in which we believe, it says you shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Saints, let's get it together. Now, well, let, me, let me back up here. And it says in verse 11, And such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus. Come on, saints. It's the time for us to sacrifice. It's the time for us to sanctify ourselves. It's time for us to get back on the altar. There are some things that we are doing that you know you have no business doing. Galatians 5 tells us, it tells us this, verse, verse 19 says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresy, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Wow! How are we just skipping through these scriptures, saying a 
amen, like it don't apply to us, and our lifestyles reflect everything that's said in there. Fornication, the Greek from the Greek word pornea, it's illicit sexual intercourse, adultery, fornication, homosexuality, lesbianism, intercourse with animals, intercourse with close relatives, eating sacrifice offered to idols, uh, sleeping with a divorced man or woman. I said, oh my goodness. <laughs> yes, a divorced man or woman. It says in the reference to scripture of Mark 10, in the 11th verse, and it says, and he saith unto them who shall put away his wife and marry another, committed adultery against her. And if a woman shall put away her husband and be married unto another, she committed adultery. See, that's one thing I love about the grace of God. See, he said all these will not inherit the kingdom, but the one thing about the grace of God, the grace comes in when you have when you are ignorant of what it says. Hebrews 10, let me read that verse again. It said, For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth. Did you know you was doing it wrong? Did you know you were sinning? I'm telling you, the grace of God, the mercy of the Lord is operating in our houses greatly because we have fallen short. I have, look, I've fallen short. There's some things that we've done that we've got. Look, I'm <laughs> I, I'm a divorcee. But you know, when you come into the, it's in the knowledge once you learn about it. Now you got to walk forward. You got to walk this narrow. The path just got a little narrower. Amen. Straight is the way. We, can, get, we got to be in a place of repentance. Lord, forgive me. For I was ignorant of your word. Oh, God. Don't you think God know you were ignorant of it? First Tim, uh, another word in it, it said uncleanness. Uncleanness is the Greek word akarthasia, akarthasia, which physically or morally uncleanness. It's impurity of lustful, luxurious, profligate, profligate. It's a luxurious profligate, uh, which means recklessly extravagant or wasteful in the use of resources living of unpure motives. Meaning basically you just throwing money away and you don't care but your motive behind it is to get something that really don't belong to you. Unpure motives. They throw on it the innocent all the time. Hollywood. Hollywood is famous for this. Amen? It says lasciviousness, which is the Greek word S-L-G-I. It's unbridled lust, excess, wantonness, shameless, outrageousness. Emulations, meaning zealous. This is zeal, is the, the Greek word zealous, which means zeal in the behalf of or for a person or thing. The fierce indignation, punitive zeal, meaning basically the animal rights people. They are willing to lock you up for hitting a dog. That not only will they lock you up, they will not only put you in jail, but that, that, that is wrong. You've got more respect for an animal than you do for the homeless guy on the corner. You would rather take the dog home and feed it than the homeless guy that owns the dog. You are in trouble of hell fighting. Amen. Oh, you don't want to hear that? Okay, okay. All right, cool. I'm just, I'm just giving you what the word says. No, no, that it says seditions. Seditions, which means in the Greek word is, is dekos asia. Dekos atasia, okay? Which means dissensions and divisions. Now, how many people in churches causing divisions? You've got cliques, you've got this, you've got people are leaving church left and right because of a certain group in the church. That group, you are in danger of hell fire because you are causing dissensions. You know, I, I just preached a couple of weeks ago. I talked about the blessings of God. I talked about how we are blessed. I talked about how the Lord, when the Lord commands the blessing, we, we have to understand something. God commands the blessings when we walk according to his word. There are some things that we are doing that are totally out of context 
that's totally out of boundaries of his word. In, in Numbers, the 22nd chapter, I was telling you about how Balaam, uh, Balak hired Balaam to curse the children of Israel coming out of Egypt. And he tried, he tried several times to do it. But on the last one, he did this is what the word of the Lord came to Balaam saying. Numbers the 24th chapter, it says, And when Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord <laughs> to bless Israel, don't you know it pleases God to bless you? He went not at us the other time to seek enchantment, but he set his face toward the wilderness. He set his face and he looked at Israel in verse 5 and said, How goodly are their tents, O Jacob, and thy tabernacles, O Israel. As the valleys are they spread forth as gardens by the riverside, as the trees of the lion, lion aloes with the Lord have planted, and the cedar trees beside the water, he shall pour the water out of his buckets, and his seed shall be in many waters, and the king shall be higher than Ahab, and his kingdom shall be exalted. God brought him forth out of Egypt. He hath, as it were, the strength of a unicorn. He shall eat up the nations, his enemies, and shall break their bones and pierce them through with his arrows. He couched, he lay down as a lion, and as a great lion, who shall stir him up? Blessed is he that blesses thee, and cursed is he that cursed thee. These are the things that God wants. Well, this is how the diviner saw the children of Israel. This God loved to bless us. He loved to bless his people. He loved to bless those that are in Zion. Amen. But there is some things that are required of us in order for him to do it. Look at this. We're coming out of Egypt. Numbers 25. I want you to see this. He said, And Israel of old and Shem, and the people began to commit order with the daughters of Moab. And they called the people unto the sacrifices of their God, and the people could eat and bow down to their God. Once they began to sin, God's fury came upon them. His wrath came upon them, them. The children of Israel coming out of Egypt, he's blessing them. He's allowing them to conquer territories. He's going before them. He's stopping the divination, the divination that's trying to be against them. As soon as he leaves the steps away, they go and worship other gods. That because of that, 24,000 Israelites were killed, were died. They came, died of a plague. And they died of the plague. And then one of them had the no nerve to bring the Midianite princess in front of Moses in the camp. Needless to say, he was pierced through and so was the Midianite princess. What am I saying? I'm saying we here in America, we're coming out of Egypt at the same time right now, 400 years of captivity. We cannot repeat what our forefathers have done. We've got to walk according to this word. By faith, by faith I believe. By faith I'm walking this way. By faith I live my life according to this word because of the blessings of God, because he loves me. Because he's delivering me. Because he's bringing me out. Because he, he and if they told Jesus, he said, where, where are we going? With you, you have the words, you have the key to eternal life. Where are we going, saints? Don't you know, children of Israel, without your hope in Christ, you are lost? There is no hope in this world for you. Amen. <laughs> Look what it says. First Peter 3 says this. Verse 8. Finally, be ye all of one mind and have a compassion one of another. Love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrary wise, blessing, knowing that ye are thereunto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. For he that will love life and seek good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that speak no God. See, there's some things that we have to do. I'm not talking the Old Testament. This is New Testament. Let him, you got to run from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. For 
For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. You already got the world against you. Why do you want God against you too? The world don't like you. <laughs> why do you want the only person, the only God, that the only true living God, why do you want him against you too? Verse 13. And, he, and who is he that will harm you if you be followers of, of, of that which is good? Who will mess with you? Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. But and in verse 14, I want you to pay attention to this. He said, but, and if you suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asking you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Be ready to tell them why I'm standing fast. I'm standing fast because of the love of God. I'm standing fast because he has promised me. I'm standing fast, fast because he has promised me he's going to not only keep me, but my children are blessed. My children's children's children are blessed. They're blessed because I serve the living God. They're blessed because I teach them to follow his ways and keep his commandments. They are blessed because they are a part of my fruit. <laughs> you have to understand this thing. This is deeper than you. Your soul is at stake. How can you risk eternal life for a few minutes of pleasure right now? And it's just a few minutes. He said, <coughs> Hebrews 10, and verse 12, 16, it says, This is the covenant that I will make with them. After those days, said the Lord, I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. I'm going to stop right there. You cannot tell me you don't know about sin. Well, maybe you can. All right, I'll take that back. Let me tell you this. If you think back to the very first time you committed the act, what did your mind tell you to do? If you think back to the first time you fornicated, if you think back to the first time you committed adultery, if you think back to the first time you did... <laughs> things orally. Let's just think about that. What was, your, what was the conversation that came out of your mouth? What was it? Think about it. It was in your mind already. It tells you that no, this is wrong. But you kept doing it until you acquired a taste for it. Same thing when you laid down and decided oh, I'm homosexual. After that, that first time, what did you think? When you lay there afterwards, what did you think? Even, I'm going to tell you about myself. Let me tell you about Lorenzo. I was in an adulterous relationship. Yeah, I, I committed adultery in my, in my first marriage. Sorry, I never told him, but I did. And, and here we go. That night, I'm there. I'm, I'm the first time I did it, I, I was there. You know, it's after, it's two o'clock in the morning. I'm, you know, we didn't have a drinking party and had a good night out, ran in the street. It's three o'clock in the morning. I wake up and I'm like, oh, I'm here. Oh, where? I got to get out of here. You, something on the inside of me told me to get up and go home because I was in sin. He said, I will put my laws into their hearts, into their minds. I will write them so you know. And the Holy Ghost will convict you when you're doing wrong. Verse 17, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Nowhere, nowhere remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holy and Holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which we have consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. And having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near 
with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Come on, it's time, it's time to quit playing church. If you're in church, be in church. If you're going to be in church and tripping, just go home. If you're going to live, like go to the club, have yourself a good time because you're in church, wreaking habit, and all you're doing is making hell just a little bit harder for you. Yeah, that's right. I, look, I got to tell you like it is. You're just making it a little bit harder. That's all because you know better. Let us draw near with a true heart, full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from evil conscience and our bodies washed in pure water. Saints of God is not too late. Let us hold fast to the profession of our faith without wavering. If you say you're going to be with Jesus, come on, be with him. If you're not, go on, quit tripping. Go on. If you want to sow to the flesh, sow to the flesh. And when you get tired and you feel like, come on back. Amen. In the meantime, don't be a roadblock for those that are truly seeking him. Amen. Let us consider one another, not to provoke unto love, but let us consider one another and provoke unto love and to do good works. Hey, I love you. I love you so much so that I'm telling you the truth. I love you so much so that, guess what? I am trying to get you to understand something, that we, the church, are in trouble. And, the ch and, and all of these pastors and all of these men, they, look, if they ain't teaching you the truth, all they're doing is lying in their pockets with your money. What, what, what about your salvation? You know, it tells us to study, to show ourselves a proof. If you're seeking God, if you're truly seeking God, he will lead you to the place that you're supposed to be in. Number two, if you're truly seeking God, he's going to open your eyes to the truth. He will show you you. Amen. He shows me me all the time. <laughs> Look, even when studying this lesson, I'm going to tell you, this divorce thing hit me like a ton of bricks. Yes, it did, because I've been divorced. I know what I'm talking about. So, you know, but I thank God for his grace. His grace tells us that guess what? After you have come into the knowledge, after you know, guess what? Line, guess what? That line got, it just got narrow. Amen. Let us hold fast to the profession of our faith without wavering. Let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another so and so much the more as you see the day approaching. We got to get together and be on one accord because this day is not only approaching, the evil day is here. And we need like minded saints gathering together, studying the Word of God, praying, fasting, that you're able to defeat all the works of the enemy. Amen. Verse 20, I tell you again, it said, For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. But a certain fearful looking up for our judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. What adversaries? If you live after the flesh, you sow to the flesh. The flesh is enmity to God. The flesh is an adversary to God. It's an adversary. It do not like God. Okay? Just like Adam was made in the flesh, so he died in the flesh, so is the second Adam made, made in the spirit, walked after the spirit, and he lives after the spirit continually. I want you to read this next verse because I, I want you to understand this. Hebrews 10, verse 28, it says this. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Basically, what Moses did was that they had two or three people that said, you committed adultery, they got rocks and they stoned you, stoned you to death. Verse 29 says, How much sore of punishment suppose ye shall he be word thought worthy who have trodden under the foot of the Son of God? Jesus went to the cross and died for your sin. You have accepted him, and now that you have accepted him, you have to realize one thing Jesus said. Jesus said, go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. That was a commandment. If you think 
that the people of Moses didn't get away. Just imagine, we, we, we that's in the church that's chasing after Christ, that, that's willfully in church, that's sinning, that's causing other people to fall, that's, in, that's causing envy and strife, that is just in there doing warmongering things, that's committing adultery with the members. Them, 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 you know, the deacons, the deacons go out take, be flirting with every sister that come in the church. You know, and then those that are in there practicing lesbianism and, and so homosexuality. You guys, I'm telling you, you can be set free if you want to be. Just ask the Holy Spirit to set you free. He will. He will. He'll bring you out. He's there. He, you have to understand the only thing that's driving you to do that is a spirit that has inhabited your hosts. That's it. Get, get that spirit cast out of you and live holy unto God. Amen? Amen. The only thing, but it's your choice. It's your choice. I know most people will say, well, I, uh, I was born this way. Well, it's time to be born again. Now you know the truth. You know the truth. So I'm telling you right now, come. Come to Christ. Come, church. I, I, I ain't talking about no, I'm talking about those that are in church. Quit playing church. Because the more you play, the only thing you're doing is wreaking. You're building a fire in hell for yourself. That's all I can say. That's all I can say. That's all. I, 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 we, we're in church and we're new. We're, we're dying. We're in church believing God and we're dying and we're getting, being lost. 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 We're in church and lost. Father, just have your way today, oh God. I pray that this helps somebody. I hope you pay attention to, to your walk, your lifestyle. Just look at the word and hold it up to the mirror. Let it be a mirror to your walk. Let it let you see, and if you understand what you're doing, see if it lines up with the word of God. If it don't line up with the word of God, tell the Lord you're sorry and turn it around. Turn it around. Say, Lord, help me with me. <laughs> help me with me. Father, I just thank you right now. And I bless your holy name, oh God. Father, for everyone that's listening to this, that we need to turn around in their life, God. Step into their life, oh God, and turn it around, oh God. Begin to bless, begin to move, begin to put roadblocks to sin, oh God. Build up the gates of God that they can't cross over into the land of sin oh God. But Father, let them realize that they need to come back to you oh God. Let them come back holy. Teach them that there's a way in you that is perfect. <laughs> there's a way in you God. There's a way in you Lord that you will bless and you will not. <laughs> You'll bring them to